Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 19, The Fault in Our Cutie Marks. Wow, I actually really enjoyed this episode. Gabby is really freaking cute. The scene where I really realized how cute she was, when the song started and she started doing this kind of bouncing thing to the music, I'm like, oh god, that's cute! <laughs> yes, she's cute, but could she have possibly been any more hyper? I mean, that was like if Pinkie Pie had wings. I was going to say, she'd only be more hyper if she met Pinkie Pie. Because <laughs> those two together, there would be not enough Ritalin in the world to calm them down. <laughs> and so we can judge on how the story played out that the two of them did not meet in Griffinstone. She only saw Pinkie Pie in Griffinstone. Also, this is like a really nice CMC episode. They've been having a lot of those recently. Well, I think now that they've found their cutie marks, they're settled down and it's probably a little easier to write them because there's more of a structure around them. Also, it makes you wonder if they're ever going to expand out of the clubhouse or if they're going to expand the clubhouse and make it more of a professional environment. And since there's a currency in... A question of, will they ever start charging for their services when they suddenly have a lot of people working with them? Or will it always be pro bono? The thing is, we very rarely see money change hands in this universe, and it's usually never between main characters or characters that an episode focuses on, unless they're in another location. Like, we've never seen Spike pay for the quills and parchment that... Twilight sends him after. We've never seen anyone pay for an order that they pick up from the Cakes Bakery. Hmm. We have seen money change hands in the market when we we're trying to show Fluttershy ways to bargain with other ponies. Mm -hmm. And if you can't tell yet about the drawing, I definitely found her really cute. And I get this idea. I had trouble coming up with the pose for the drawing until it hit me. Wait a minute. She got her cutie mark as a physical object. Zelda! Dun 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 dun! <laughs> <laughs> She's doing the classic, I got an item pose from Legend of Zelda, holding up her cutie mark, floating in the air. I'm debating whether or not to actually add the text below, but this is your cutie mark. It represents what you- <laughs> <laughs> It represents what your purpose in life is. Well, looks like you shouldn't be trolling around dungeons anymore. Ah. <laughs> uh... Also, her and Gilda need to get together and start cheering up those Griffins, because boy, as they put it, cranky. <laughs> Just a little bit. And this seems to be the season for, okay, we're going back and we're fixing all the stereotypes we put out there earlier. Changelings are evil. Okay, here's a nice changeling. Griffins are all jerks. Okay, here's a super nice griffin. <laughs> super nice is definitely one way to put it. <laughs> And since we had a diplomatic overnight thing to Yak Yakistan that wasn't shown, we'll probably get that as a flashback later in the season, and we'll see the Yaks not being gigantic raging bullies. Hmm. Also, I wonder if we're going to see what the contents of Gilda's letter is, and the interaction between Rainbow Dash and Gilda through that letter. Will we ever actually get to see that? Will it become a plot point in the future, or is it just an off-the-head thing of, ooh, I got a reason to actually go to Ponyville! <laughs> Well, hopefully it will be incorporated into the season because as long as she had all the mail delivered, couldn't she just go to Ponyville after work? And considering how cranky the Griffins are, are they really going to care two bits if their mail doesn't get delivered? They're not going to be any nicer or any meaner about it. Mm, maybe they'll be a little bit more meaner. Or they'll say, we're not paying you if they actually ever paid her to deliver the mail. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like... How the CMC are being written now, like you said, it, they seem to be able to write them easier. I think it's also because they're acting a, a little bit more adult. They're taking things a little bit more seriously. And they weren't full of themselves a little bit, but they also managed to ground themselves a little bit. It's like when Sweetwell was like, yeah, but uh, we'll eventually run into something hard. You know, we can expect that. So they are, they are very proud of themselves, but they also seem to be able to realize that, yeah... <laughs> Yeah, that it's not always going to be easy, but that was basically a setup for the episode of, okay, you guys are feeling really confident in your abilities. Time to knock you down a peg. Yep. I also feel sorry for Twilight. She was so ready to do research, and I bet you she was so disappointed when she found out it was fake. Oh. <laughs> I was set 
to write a paper and everything. One of my favorite pastimes. Uh, I wonder if Spike asks when, like, so since a griffin got a cutie mark, can I get one? <laughs> uh, I do like they, how they gave her a set of two, just like how theirs are actually a set of two, instead of just giving her one. Mm -hmm. So just further canonizing that it's on both sides. Mm-hmm. Well, I got most of my ideas out of the way. Time to dive into probably plenty of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as you would think this time. As huh? I said a lot of it early on. It was kind of succinct. The, the, I, we do need to discuss the title. The fa Fault in Our Cutie Marks immediately brought to mind The Fault in Our Stars, which... Though I have neither read it nor seen the movie, everything that I know about it says that that is a tearjerker of a book. So I don't know if they were referencing the book or if they were referencing, supposedly, according to Wikipedia, the author said that the title was inspired by, which was actually part of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, where it goes, The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Hmm. So, not that they haven't referenced some very adult stuff with 28 pranks later, but The Fault in Our Stars, though it is technically a young adult novel, it deals with very, very serious real-life items. Mm. I like the fact that we didn't spend the entire episode really figuring out that, oh, since we can't get her a cutie mark, we can at least show her what she's actually good at. We didn't take the whole episode just to get to that point. <laughs> Because there's a lot of shows that would have taken the entire episode just to focus on that part of the story. There wasn't really much comedy and it. it was just a very nice, bright, happy episode. There was a lot of fun little moments. I liked the montage that was inside the song. Oh, do you have any um, particular thoughts on the song itself? It was okay. Um, they've had better, but it definitely kept up with Gabby's energy level. Also, it looks like Ponyville could use a couple more griffins that are nice. Because <laughs> they are strong. Well, she said it. You know, the strength of a lion and the wingspan of an eagle, that's, you know, a pretty good combination. So it looks like they're right up there with the strongest of earth ponies. Mm -hmm. Also, I think bucking's quicker than having her pick the apples. Probably, but we had to show that she could help everyone at everything. What I want to know is... How did she manage to grow up that nice with no example in Griffinstone of what nice is? And, you know, kind of how old is she? You know, who are her parents? Because without an example of kindness, how did she avoid falling into that whole Griffins are all about money and being antisocial and grumpy that is the stereotype for the Griffin kingdom? Mm. Well... Based on a couple of things, I think griffins kind of start out nice when they're younger, but it's an environment that kind of shapes them. I think she was one of the lucky ones, as it were, to um, stay nice as she grew older. So that's my theory anyways. Mm -hmm. well, it would have been nice to hear a little bit more than that quick montage of how she tries to be nice to everyone and that that's just continually made her feel like more and more of an outsider. Hmm. More backstory is always nice, but I think for what they had in this episode, it actually filled the episode rather nicely and didn't feel like they could have put really any more in there. Unlike some episodes, we were like, you know, this could have been two parts. <laughs> it's always kind of funny. The ones we don't have much to complain about, we don't really talk that much about. <laughs> well, I think that's because going over the positive points takes less time than drilling down into every layer of detail of every problem that we have with an episode. Oh, and going back to the song real quick, I actually paid attention and there's a point where Gabby looks at the chart and she points at the baby and they actually do cut to her taking care of the kid in the next shot. So I'm like, oh, yeah, good. Nice little detail there. Because <laughs> sometimes the characters were like in montages like that, they'll point at something to indicate that, yeah, we're going to do this next, but in the next shot, that's not actually what they're doing. And they still show that thing that they were going to be doing, but they show it later in the montage. Yeah. No, the montage was pretty point on, and it was very cute, her rocking the crib with her tail while hanging clothes on the line. I also feel sorry for, um, I think his official name is Bulk Biceps or Snow? No, it's Bulk mm -hmm. Biceps. Snowflakes is the fan name. I also like in that scene where Gilda's... Gilda? 
Gabby is helping him, and then suddenly she hands the rest of it to him, and he's like, ah, crunch, as he collapses, and as she goes over to help Granny cross the road. Mm -hmm. Also, I would like to know more about, what was it, Blue Note, I think? <laughs> <laughs> he just seemed like a fun guy to hang out with. Also, I'm wondering if that was actual saxophone, or if that was a digitized version of a saxophone, because it seemed a little bit MIDI sounding to me. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you. But what we haven't touched on is the very opening of the episode with Petunia digging in the backyard. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think her mom actually finds pearls. That's why hmm. she has pearls on her side and she wears pearls because she, and that's how she's rich because she finds pearls and sells them. And the father is a fencer, so he's kind of upper class as well. Which explains why they were worried about her being a pirate. But since her mom finds something, and I, I think that kind of, maybe traits do pass down, but they aren't strict traits. Like, uh, the fact that her mom, mom finds things, that kind of passes down to the daughter, where who finds fossils. I also like how the parents were ready to accept it, but they wanted to make sure, so they had a pirate's costume. <laughs> Already. <laughs> I'm like, hey, keep that around. Yeah, save that for the next Nightmare Night. Mm -hmm. I love how the Cutie Mark Crusaders didn't even think prior. They were automatically like, archaeologist, duh. <laughs> what were you thinking, pirate? You know, it was skull and bones. And I can't say crossbones because they weren't crossed. Nope. Now if they were crossed, then I'd be worried because that's a Jolly Roger. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. But skull and bones, I thought they were worried... I know, children's show. I thought they were worried she was going to turn into a serial killer or something. Yeah. Also, is it just me or did it feel more awkward than it needed to be? Because it sounded like, like, so do you think our daughter swings that way? Kind of like, do you think our child's like this? Do we need to get a psychologist kind of thing? Like, it, it felt like that to me. It's like, well, that feels awkward and weird and, oh, okay, I get it now. It was supposed to feel awkward and weird because the cutie marks seem to be a adolescent coming of age type thing. So tell me a single parent who did not have some issues with their children at the point that they became teenagers. Hmm. Also, Ponysaurus? So do they just call it a Ponysaurus or is that actually a distant relative to ponies? <laughs> And if ponies have some reptilian ancestry, does that mean at some point ponies and dragons were related to each other? Well, technically, if you go far enough back, humans and lizards are related to each other. Yes, if you believe in evolution and go far enough back, everyone's related to everyone. You hear that? You can't date anybody. <laughs> uh, unless you're in certain communities. <laughs> or certain states, for that matter. <laughs> uh. Yeah, the moment I saw the key mark, I was like, uh, I can kind of see where the parents are coming from, but I think they're perfectly fine. <laughs> also, how did she get her cutie mark if she hadn't dug up anything before? Or did she dig up some other stuff before? Or was it just from the fact that she researched a lot of stuff? Hard to say, because we've had it established that a lot of ponies have their cutie mark and don't know how to make best use of it, like trouble shoes and bulk biceps. And Diamond Tiara. Mm-hmm. I would love to see more of Diamond Tiara now that she's quote-unquote reformed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to see her interactions with her mother now. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, overall, I thought it was a good episode. Had a nice flow to it. Very enjoyable to watch. And I caught some more stuff the second time through. I enjoyed the episode. I would have probably enjoyed it more if Gabby was a little less hyper. She could also fall into the category of having the disease to please. Which she actually does show a little bit of in painting a fake cutie mark to make the cutie mark crusaders feel better. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that scene. That says a lot about her personality in that. That she would rather please someone else and she's pretty quick to get over things apparently as well. Which makes her come off as somewhat shallow almost because she wanted this so desperately. And, oh, it didn't work out so... Yeah, I'm going to fake it, and then I'm going to run away. Mm -hmm. Also shows that she's not very good at lying because she's such a nice person. <laughs> you can be a nice person and still be capable of lying quite well. So, nice to see, again, more interspecies interaction. 
Like I said, we seem to be going back and correcting previous season stereotypes. So I expect next the Yaks of Yak Yakistan and then maybe whatever King Sombra actually is. Oh, speaking of other things I'd like to see, I would love to see Babs come back. That'd be kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 19, The Fault in Our Cutie Marks. That, that brings up the fact that, the way I said that brings up the fact that I like the fact that we didn't spend the entire episode really figuring out that, oh, since we can't get her a cutie mark, we can at least show her what she's actually good at. We didn't take the whole episode just to get to that point. Because <laughs> there's a lot of shows that would have taken the entire episode just to focus on that part of the story. <laughs> and could you have said fact a few more times in those sentences? Could I have said what? Fact. You were like, I really like the fact, you know, the fact, like, okay, we get it. I didn't realize I was saying it that often. <laughs> Not as bad as our also's and my yas, but still. I don't have much to nitpick on the episode. I gotta pick on something. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lux's art? He also has a Patreon page and does take commissions. Please check the link below for commission availability.